One of the best parts of traveling to new countries is being exposed to and trying new kinds of food. My first time to Japan, I was nervous about what I was going to eat. As someone who doesn't like fish or seafood, I thought that my options in Japan would be really slim. Turns out I didn't really have anything to worry about. So, for those of you who prefer meat and potatoes like me, in this video, I want to show you how Japanese cuisine is nothing to be afraid of. In fact, the experiences that you can have while eating through Japan will likely become one of the best parts of your trip. Let's start with one of the most approachable Japanese meals that you can have, yakiniku. Yakiniku is tabletop grilled meats, and it's easy to find in almost any Japanese city. Your experience will vary from restaurant to restaurant, but generally you'll be seated at a table where you'll have your own private grill for you to be able to grill whatever meats that you can order. Beef is most common, but pork, chicken, and other meats aren't uncommon either. Some restaurants will have a fixed course menu where they will bring out various courses of meats for you to grill, which makes ordering extremely simple. Yakiniku is a great option for you to try premium Wagyu beef as well without breaking the bank, as they come in such small portions. This course that I had in Japan only cost $65 per person and had four different meat courses. Most places you go in Japan, it won't be uncommon to see street vendors selling a variety of different foods in parks or along busy commuter areas as well. Don't be afraid to try something that looks good to you. Japan is very strict when it comes to cleanliness and hygiene for street vendors, so you shouldn't have any issues with street food in Japan. Plus, it can be an opportunity to try something new that you couldn't find back home. Of course, in a big city like Tokyo, you won't have any issues finding lots of delicious food. My first few times in Japan, I was very nervous about going into any restaurant, and the variety of choices was overwhelming. I found that izakayas, traditional Japanese pubs, are a great way to get a lot of different dishes to figure out what you like. Most izakayas will have yakitori, which is like skewed meat on a stick, small plates, dumplings, noodles like ramen or soba, and of course, lots to drink. Omori Yokocho, or Memory Lane, which is located right outside the train station in the Shinjuku ward of Tokyo, is a great place for foreign tourists to get izakaya food, so I highly recommend it. When you finally make it out of Tokyo and start exploring the rest of the country, you will inevitably find yourself on a train somewhere. Eating while traveling by train is actually one of the best parts of travel in Japan, and it's where I really suggest going out of your way to try to find a bento box. Bento boxes are traditional Japanese lunch boxes that have small compartments with a variety of different foods and rice. Most train stations sell a specific type of bento called ekiben, which are bento made specifically to be eaten on trains. Shops will be selling ekiben, so it shouldn't be hard to find them in almost any major train station. Obviously, you can't come to Japan without trying its most famous culinary export, sushi. Since I'm not a big fan of fish or seafood, I was reluctant to try sushi, both because I felt like it I wouldn't like it, and because that I wouldn't appreciate it like many people do. That said, if you're like me, you should try it at least once while you're in Japan. And if you want an option that's a bit more approachable than going out to a gourmet sushi restaurant, I highly recommend going to a conveyor belt sushi restaurant. 
The Kura sushi chain is very popular in Japan and you can find them in almost every major city. The best part of this particular chain is that it is super interactive. You order your sushi using a touch screen, which has the option for English, and also allows you to know exactly what it is you're getting. Your food comes out on a special conveyor belt right to you, or you can choose from the plates constantly circling below. They also have a game where for every five plates you eat, you can put them into a cleaning chute for a chance to win a small prize. Sadly, I didn't win anything this time. One of the coolest things about Japan is all the technology that you find everywhere, including this automated beer dispenser that I found at Kura Sushi. The other thing that I like about Kura Sushi is that they have options beyond fish. For example, this is a Hamburg steak sushi that I got. So no matter what you want, no matter how picky of an eater you are, if you go to one of these kinds of places, you'll probably find something that you want. When you might be feeling a bit more adventurous, I definitely recommend going to local markets to eat as well, like this famous market called Omicho in the city of Kanazawa. These markets will have the freshest ingredients, and if you're not a big seafood eater like me, it's probably the best place to explore trying seafood. At least, there you know it's the freshest that you could possibly get. In fact, maybe you'll find that you actually like it a lot more than you thought you would. If you happen to be in Japan during cold months, hot pot is another great option for you. My favorite style of hot pot is called shabu shabu, which is where extremely thinly sliced meat and vegetables are cooked in boiling broth. It's also fun to end dinner with a wagashi, a traditional Japanese red bean sweet that always changes with the seasons. And for my final recommendation, I want to suggest not where to eat, but also where to stay. Staying at a ryokan, or a traditional Japanese inn, is so much more than staying at your average hotel. A stay at a ryokan generally includes both dinner and breakfast, and many ryokans have hot springs right on site for you to enjoy as well. A ryokan could be the perfect place for you to experience Japanese fine dining known as kaiseki. Kaiseki is a very traditional meal where multiple different courses are served over the course of the evening. It will typically include local seasonal foods served in a very specific order, including a raw fish dish, a simmered dish, a smoked dish, a soup dish, and it will usually end with miso soup, rice, and Japanese pickles. It is truly as much an experience as it is a meal. Well, those are my suggestions for what to eat in Japan for those of you who are like me and don't love fish or seafood. Of course, with any travel, I encourage you to open your mind and try lots of new things while traveling in Japan. But I hope this video has given you some idea on how to make experiencing Japanese cuisine a highlight of your visit to Japan. And if you want more travel ideas and tips, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Safe travels, everyone.